gun violence in the city of Philadelphia is out of control and it is affecting all of us. There are many people doing great things that have not gone noticed. Today, I want to highlight Leslie Molina, aka Mo, who is doing a documentary called My City is Dying, But I Choose to Live. Her cameraman and partner is Terrence Cook, aka Tyree. Tariq's assistant was Anthony Burton, who was murdered while they were actually shooting a documentary with two mothers who had lost their son to gun violence. And that occurred on April 2nd, 2021. Tariq and Anthony were good friends. And now Tariq, Reek, is left with a heavy burden on his shoulders after his good friend was murdered. Mo, tell me a little bit about yourself and why you decided to do this documentary. Okay, so my name is um, Leslie Molina, the name of Mo. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this short film is because um, my city is dying and I choose to live. I just wanted to bring enlightenment of what's going on in the city of Philadelphia and it is in their inner cities, the hood. North Philly, South Philly, West Philly, all the, uh, all filled up here. Right now, there's so much killing, there's so much hate. There's so much going on in the city of Philadelphia, um, and I see it. So I wanted to come out and just bring enlightenment of what's going on in the city of Philadelphia. I want people to see it. We hear about it. Um, some of us are experiencing the things that's going on in the city of Philadelphia, but I wanted people to see it all over the city different cities of what's going on in the city of Philadelphia. My city is dying, but I choose to live. I'm, I'm standing up to live. Which is very, very, very powerful. So how do you contact the individuals that you want to be in your documentary? Um, I went up to mothers whose sons and daughters that were murdered in the streets of, in the streets of Philadelphia. I went out to business owners. I went out to officers, police officers. I went out to... Um, People who own, like Khadijah, who owns the funeral homes. I went out to um, just different people that are experiencing and that are involved in what's going on in the city of Philadelphia. Um, law enforcement. I went out to, um, like I said, I went out to mothers who, who have lost their, their kids in the city of Philadelphia. I went out to principals who schools are closing. I went out to business owners who didn't make it after the covid who was shut down because of COVID. Um, I went out to those who lost their house, who lost their cars, who lost their homes, who lost their jobs. I went out to those people that are need that are in need of help. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. So I just went, I just started looking, asking questions. People contact me. Um, where I'm, the, my location of my restaurant is in um, the, the heart of North Philly. 24th and Gratz, 2466 Gratz Street. There's a lot of going on, a lot of killing down there, a lot of um, kids um, being deprived. So just a lot of stuff going on. And I'm not from North Philly, but um, they need me. My restaurant, my business is in North Philly, so I'm focusing on North Philly because my community, my customers, um, they come in, they tell me stories. I look at the kids and how they're doing with the kids. And I'm just, I'm just here to help. I just want to help as much as I can. Um, and that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. I'm, I'm just doing what I can do basically just to bring just to bring some type of attention and maybe we can come up with a solution. We need more love and less hate. We need more people to come together and stop talking about it. Let's do it. I have a saying saying, um, no complaints, just get it done. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of the complaints. I'm tired of the excuses. I'm tired of, you know, of, of everybody, you know, just people just complaining. Stop complaining and do something about it. You know, we say we have to lead by example. You know, we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to, as people that are in position to do things differently, do things positive, and the people shall follow. That's all. We just need some, we just need people to do this, this, this to do right. And they, and they should listen. They, they're going to follow. And I've been doing so much down on Cumberland Street, and they've been listening. I have cleanup day once a month. You know, I give away free food once a month. I'm passing out different, you know, um, wording and, and, and just trying to 
embrace people and give people hugs and and whatever it needs to be out there. It's just it's just it's just a lack of of love. And I think that love will conquer. Love will you know what I'm saying? It would it would bring us together. We need help. We need I help. Agree. And I'm here. I agree. Now, Mo, let's talk about April 2nd, 2021. You and your cameraman, Tyreek, and Tyreek decided to use an assistant, which was Anthony. And you guys were setting up and you were getting ready to interview two lovely women that I know, Sharon and Tahara, and both of them had lost their sons to gun violence. Tell me what happened that day with you shooting a documentary on gun violence. Yes. So me and the crew, we arrived at uh, Tahara Fortune's uh, house at 19th and Diamond. Uh, We was in the house setting up the cameras and setting up, you know, the living room area where we was going to interview the two young ladies. Um, We had asked Anthony to go outside to pick up another piece of equipment that we needed. Um, to finish the shoot. Um, he wasn't outside no longer than two minutes. We heard four shots. Um, we, the door was cracked. So we closed the door just to make sure that nobody was you know, running inside the house or running towards us. We waited about three minutes. We went to the door. We went to the window. Um, we opened the door and Anthony was on the ground. Um, it was a scene out of a movie. It was just, it was just crazy. I mean, we were talking two minutes, and then he went outside, and he was shot. Um, he was so excited to do this project because he had lost his brother and his nephew a year ago. He was talking about how he was excited about doing the project. And it was just, you know, I'm still in shock. I'm still in disbelief. Um, one minute you're talking to someone and the next minute he's gone. And this makes me more, it, it just pushes me more to bring this out, to bring this, this message out, to try to, you know, stop someone else from committing a murder. You know, I had to deal with this. You know, I, I, how dare you take a life? Who gave you permission to take a life? How dare you? I, I've been talking to Rick for a couple of days and, and asked them, you know, I just don't understand who gave this person the right to take a life. So, you know, I'm just, it's just, it's, it's very, it's just, I, I just, I'm lost for words. Like, good man. He was excited to work. He always wanted to work. All he wanted to do was, you know, you know, just work. Mm-hmm. And it's just to, to come outside to leave to, to see him laying there. It was it was crazy. It was just it was hurt. Now did all of you actually go outside where he where he was and wait with him until the ambulance came? Yes, we were all outside. Rick walked over to him. I stood over him. You know, we was calling his name out to see if he would, you know, if he was wake up or, you know. Um, yeah, we all went outside. I think Rick was the first, Tariq was the first person outside. I was the second person outside. And I was just getting ready to go outside to my vehicle to get my phone. I left my phone in the truck. And Anthony went first. He opened the door at one first and I was getting ready to go outside, but I stopped to talk to Tahara for a second. And, you know, that could have been me. I was going to go outside to get my phone. So it was just, it was just open my eyes out really because I saw it with my eyes. You see what I'm saying? You could talk about it. You could see about it. You can read about it, but to actually experience it with your own eyes right there in the flesh live, um, yeah, it did something to me. Now, did, it, but, did you think about at that point, should I stop this documentary or this made you go even harder and just say, I have to get this message out in the city of Philadelphia? Oh, it made me go. It's, it's going to make me go harder now. Now I'm pulling all the, the all my resources. Now I'm going to go harder 
to get this out because, you know, he was he was a part of my team, you see. Um, and I felt some type of weight because um, I wasn't able to help him. I wasn't able to go outside. I wasn't able to stop it. Um, I wish I could turn back the time. I wish that, you know, you know, you know, I really wish that I could I could have went out there to stop it or to help him. So this right here has to go forward. We have to get this message out. We have to, um, again, lead by example and get it done. You know, it's no more excuses. There's no more. Um, I can't I can't lose another person of my team. I can't. Um, so if I got to stand firm and I got to stand strong, then let's have let's go. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not scared. Um, the situation made me more aware that it's really need to be done. Um, my security is more tighter. I'm aware about, you know what I'm saying, the streets of Philadelphia. So now we're going to go hard. And I'm going to get the top people. If I got to go to the commissioner, to the to the um, president, to the mayor, to whatever, whoever got to go to, the capital, Habsburg, we got to get this done. You know, we got we to gotta, we gotta stand strong and we have to fight because at the end of the day, we're losing and my city is dying and I can't have that because why? I have children. You know what I'm saying? I have people that, that, that that's depending on me to, to live, you know, hashtag live life. Like we got to stop this. This is madness. It is. It sure is. Now, how long did you know Anthony and Tyreek and Anthony were good friends? So was Anthony your cameraman throughout all of the sessions that you did? How long did you know of it? And did you feel a sense of responsibility when that happened? So I'm more closer to Tariq. Tariq is like family. He's 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 um, a family member to my family. So uh, I knew I uh, met Tar I met Anthony through Tariq. Anthony did a couple um, jobs with Tariq for me. So I spoke to him a couple of times here and there. Um, in the beginning, I felt I felt like um, we should have went to a different location. Like I had thoughts in my mind, like, wow, you know, this man, you know, was murdered on my on my time. He was murdered working with me. And I felt bad. You know, I felt, you know, I reached out to his family, anything that I could do, um, you know, I was I was lost. I was shocked for about two or three weeks. I mean, it's, it's been you know it's been a month now, and I've been really like still, you know, contemplating on how and who and why. Um, my only thing was to pray on it, um, and to move forward, try to stop, get this message out as much as you know as fast as we can. Um, yeah. I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about life. I'm passionate about helping others. And we were going to do so much together and we're still going to do so much together at the end of the day. It's not going to stop it. You know, we love Anthony. We carry Anthony. We will continue this journey without Anthony. He will be, he will be with us, you know, in spirit. At the end of the day, we will make this happen. Um, yeah, for in his honor. Now, yeah. to read. Tell me how long you've been friends with Anthony and did you just use him for this project or has he always been your assistant? All right. So, yeah, uh, Anthony, he, he's been working with me since about 2017. And when I met Anthony in 2017, he, uh, he, he had like a construction background, you know, but he was interested in the type of work that I was doing. And, and, and he wanted to be involved with something that, that could uh, promote, that could promote. Uh, Positive. Yes. <laughs> Positivity. I'm sorry. He wanted to be involved with something that promotes positive stuff. He wanted to be around positive people. He's a North Philadelphia native and his, Years ago, he had some situations, you know, he he became a product of his environment, but he didn't want that life anymore. He wanted to leave that behind. He had grandchildren. He took care of all of his grandchildren, all of his kids himself. His income fed about a dozen people. 
you know? So, yeah. So since 2017, he's been working with me mm-hmm. and, and helping the company grow. It's just unbelievable. I was floored because Sharon actually contacted me the next day and said, Melanie, you would not believe what happened. We're shooting this documentary and the cameraman's assistant was shot and murdered just when we were getting ready to begin filming. It's just unbelievable how the gun violence in the city of Philadelphia has grown and seems like there's no regard for human life. I want you and Mo to know I appreciate everything that you're doing and any help that you need with Northwest Victim Services, please do not hesitate to ask. If you come across any family members that have unpaid funeral expenses or lost wages due to the death of any of their family members, you can always reach out to me directly. All of our services are free and therapy. Therapy, yeah. we have to. We have to and we must take advantage of that, that service. Just like I reached out to you, Tyreek, and I reached out to Mo, and I reached out to Sharon, and I reached out to Tahara, because what you saw was traumatic, and that could change your life forever. So not only was Anthony's family affected by that, his, his friends were as yes. well. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Mo, tell me something. How can people follow you to watch your documentary when it comes out? First stream will be probably YouTube. We're going to be also hosting dinners um, to like at Nomo's, um, different um, community centers, different nonprofit organizations. We'll be hosting like a movie night where we'll be showing the film um, to different, um, you know, different studios, you know, just to try to get it out there. And also we're going to push it out to, you know, Netflix and, and those type of people that, uh, that pick up these short films. Okay. So yeah, we want to start off with just probably showing you off at different locations and, um, YouTube okay. streaming. Um, Sounds good. how can people follow you on social media? Okay. So, um, my Instagram is li- at Lily Mays Cafe Grad Street. We do a lot of postings. We do a lot of uh, video postings and I do a lot of giveaways. I do a lot of charity work so they can follow me at Lily Mays Cafe, Grad Street. Um, Also, um, I'm having this thing called Shoe Hoops, Not Guns, June 26th. Um, We're closing Grad Street down. We have performance. We have free food. We have a stage. We have um, 35th District police officers coming out. We have firefighters playing basketball. We have um, ev- we have different events for the children. Um, it's June 26th. It's again shoe hoops, not guns, on Gratz and Cumberland, North Philly. Please come out, support, stand up. Let's get this message out there and let's have a good time and let's embrace those mothers who lost their children this day, June 26th. It starts at 1 p.m. It stops at 8 p.m. We're going to have fun. We're going to get this message out and just embrace these mothers who lost their children. Um, due to murder and, and, and the gun violence. Okay. So I'm, so I'm backing so them much. up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mo and Tariq, for joining me. Again, I, I stand with you and I fight with you in your mission. And I look forward to connecting to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We appreciate you. I am left with fear and shock of all the gun violence that has taken place in the city of Brotherly Love. I often take a step back and think about the shooter and think about if he or she thinks about the lives that they have destroyed. They have actually taken a loved one. Friends are lost forever. And all of us are asking that million dollar question, how do we stop the gun violence in the city of Philadelphia? We have lawmakers, elected officials, concerned community members, and a host of others that are meeting daily to use our brain power to figure out a solution so that our children, grandchildren, mothers, fathers, aunts and uncles, and all of our loved ones can walk the streets of Philadelphia without being murdered. Know that I am praying for your safety every day. Peace and blessings.